Conco and Infernoble step up into the arena, but don't worry, Tier Elements is in it for the gold. Make sure you guys smash the evolving crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. We're starting off here with our breakdown, and uh, that's three purely duelists in the top cut for this event. Purely was not having it for this tournament, man. They were prepared. They're like, you know what? The cat's out of the bag. And, and that's that's the right pun, right? Anyway, um, I don't have much else to say about that. If you don't know how to play against Purely, I feel like you're going to go into a really bad position, and that's not necessarily a good thing. We also had Bysteel Synchro in your top cut, which um, when you get the chance to look at this list, this is going to be so much different than the other versions of the Synchro stuff that we have seen as of late that I think it puts an interesting new spin on the deck. And then we had one tier elements. Hmm... RNG Pile pulls out another W. Okay. And then, of course, we had Cash Tierra. Boo! Just kidding. Uh, Cash Tierra, I don't blame people for wanting to play Old Reliable. At this point in time, the deck's consistency is the thing that is keeping people on it. And I don't blame them for that. The deck is able to, you know, set up some crazy huge boards. And it does kind of look like it's it's getting checked out just a little bit here. And then we had the duality of warrior combo down here. We had Infernoble and Minkanko both kind of stepping into the arena here and doing the thing. And full disclaimer for Minkanko, if you have zero idea what you're doing against this deck, you're gonna get battle phase reflected straight out of the game. It is an insanely powerful powerful deck at the end of the day. And of course, Infernoble out here also getting the chance to kind of showcase that, you know, the combo lines and variations that, you know, the warrior strategy can take is very, very impressive. So out of your breakdown here, uh, I would say that this feels like a super competitive event. Um, looking at the breakdown for this would be something I, I would almost see at a regional level here. And I think that's awesome. Let's pass on over to top deck list. Hey, 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 guess what? It's our tier elements winning deck. You know, I'm glad to see that this deck did perform up to, you know, a pretty good standard here because this proves that maybe people should revisit this deck. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the RNG milling, you know, in this build sometimes, you know, kind of comes up to fruition and uh, can be an issue. I get that, but the deck is still incredibly good at the end of the day, especially, you know, with Trivi Karma. It should be in the centerpiece. Now, we are playing, you know, obviously more of the Shadol package here. Hollow being one of those cards that definitely helps make, you know, some of these play lines a little bit more consistent. I mean, between Apco and the Construct and all that. Also, I mean, look, shout out here to Schism. You know how many people don't play around this card anymore? If you uh, if you end up getting wrecked by Schism, maybe you should have played some previous formats. I think this would have been an incredibly powerful thing for people to actually kind of understand the lines of play that you need to be aware of here. So very, very, very important at the end of the day to know what you're working with here. But I'm glad to see this deck did perform. Good stuff. Our second place very here is our Bysteel Synchro deck. Well, you're going to be playing all the Bysteel monsters. Remember, these are all going to be a huge level sixes that you can step on over and get the chance to kind of combo on up here. We're also playing two Book of Eclipse for defensive options to make sure that we can punish the opponent. And of course, the Converging Will's Dragon. You know, any deck that can get to the Shooting Majestic Star Dragon, and, you know, actually any of the Synchro Toolbox options down here, while, you know, still having access to the Dragon parts as well, you're probably going to get blown out. Also, shout out here to the Yadais Revolution Synchron Dragon. This card actually being a relevant searcher in the deck is actually very, very nice. I know a lot of people have kind of forgotten about Revolution, but it is nice to have a callback here to this and get the chance to actually be able to take advantage of this card. Um, I don't see anything else out of left field. I mean, if this is very similar to some of the OCG decks where you just, haha, big synchro monster go burr, and it's kind of all you need to do these days. Next up here is our purely 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 sprite yes so i've seen some purely sprite variants kind of come up in the past and it wasn't necessarily one of the the more uh strong variations of the deck but um this did finish higher than the other sprite variants out of the tournament so maybe this is something you know worth considering for the revisit down here also the anglers um because i mean hey keep in mind your purely cards most of these are rank twos so you could technically hard make these if there is a time that you you do need to do that you can actually do so so i think that's pretty cool like you can reverse engineer these you know you can also make them to the purely plays as well okay um 
yeah, purely, once again, like, the sprite package doing sprite things down here. I haven't seen a lot of sprite stuff, though, this format, which has been very, very interesting, to say the least. The things have been kind of bouncing back and forth, at least in terms of value for the sprite cards. Next up here is our, oh boy, here we're continuing on with the sprite paradigm here. Uh, this build actually opted for the Book of Moons. Um, we've seen uh, Dark Ruler, I think, has been one of the more major cards that we've seen paired with the uh, book at this point in time, because obviously you slam the board breaker, clean things up, you know, get the job done. You're you're pretty much able to kind of do whatever you want. And then, of course, the summon limits here. <laughs> Oh man, Summon Limit just continuing to be this bonkers crazy card right now. I would not be surprised if this card sticks around right now, because there's so many combo variants out here that want to do the thing. It actually just lets you sit on the Nor here, and you don't have to actually trigger the balance. You just wait for your opponent to roll through their two summons, you flip this, and now your opponent's looking at you like, uh... What am I supposed to do about this? Like, this is unfair. And I get that. <laughs> this is one of the most unfair aspects in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! at this stage. So, kind of keep that in mind, that this card gets stronger and stronger, I think, as the format goes. Uh, next up here is our Cash Tier deck. We, we borrow an OCG tech choice here? Yes, it would appear that we did. Uh, we are playing the Planet Pathfinder here to make sure that we can go get the Ray Sloth. Um, also, I mean, this does technically bait an Ash, um, though on the flip side of things, you know, the minute that we do this, we, we do lose to Droll, I feel like. So, you're, I feel like you're using this to bait out those key hand traps that are going to be an issue for you, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, all right? The more that you can pressure out cards that are going to be issues for you, especially in a deck that does not give two craps about its normal summon, all right? It's like, oh boy... We went ahead and rolled this on out. I mean, obviously, birth, you can get the additional normal summon, blah, 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 but um, this is just one more card to, you know, roll through a hand trap and get the chance to do its thing. So I'm glad to see that in terms of all variations of this, it's going pretty good out here. Next up here, more purely. We're playing the purely Shirley. I think I've seen seven purely variants at this point in time out of all of this, and not a single one of them have played purely Shirley. Like, the card is cool, don't get me wrong, but at this stage in time, so many people are just, they're, they're toggling through this and like, eh, I'm not worried about this. And I, I get that, that that's fine, all right? I'm, I, I do think, though, that the card is worth the, the revisit, maybe. Um, this build also is playing two copies of Nor, which is fine. And this build is also playing the Lingaribo. So there's still... Sometimes you, you're, see, that Nightmare Corruptor, I believe, scars you for life. You need to make sure that you have cards to be able to play through that and, you know, not worry about getting punished from it. So I think that's actually incredibly good. Outside of that, I, your bases are covered for the variants. I think that's fine. Ah, hey, it's our Minkanko deck, aka Battle Phase Reflection. And we are playing the Arahime, the Manifested Minkanko, which is the new one. I know a lot of people look at this card and they're like, I don't really see a purpose to play this. And I, I can see the argument either way. It's going to come down to, obviously, deck building. Do I want to go ahead and play this? But, obviously, the Minkanko Spirit Walk down here. This is by far, I think, the better card of the two. So the fact that you are getting, you know, the chance to play this is good. Um, this is just Battle Phase Reflection deck. I, I say this all the time, but if you have zero clue what in the world is actually going on around you, or you're like, oh boy, Minkanko, and then you're like, wait, I just... I lose. If you don't have outs to some of these monsters, you will lose the game. Especially when the, the Huli here goes into the protection mode and your opponent can't target your stuff. You're like, oh, you forget how hard Yu-Gi-Oh can be when your cards literally are untargetable. So kind of keep that in mind at the end of the day. I, uh, a lot of free value going on here. And of course, we have the powerful noble knights here i see that we are citing the vices package down here with the manadium reframing which i mean you are technically i believe you end on charles with charles you know pun intended um but you uh you do get access to some of like the reverse combo lines down here this isn't something that you're going to be doing every single game but i believe that if you feel that you do need to have access to the mana dm reframing you know just being able to board this in and get to, you know get it off the ground is very nice i haven't seen a lot of people going about this um outside of that i mean charles with the setup 
here with the additional special summon off of this with whatever sub combo lines that you have going on here are honestly the best things you're going to get off of this deck this deck is incredibly powerful the combo lines that it sets up is some of the best in modern era Yu-Gi-Oh! honestly so uh what do you guys think about today's goodies please if comment up below tell me what you guys think i'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day guys peace patrons thank you <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.